Aloha. This is May May. We'll see how long she lasts. She's not like Coog. Yeah, baby. I know it's feeding time. Well, what we got for you today is um, something I've been thinking about a long time. It's vortexes. Ooh, that gets her going. All right. Vortexes and UFOs. I don't think I got time for, <clears throat> excuse me, both of those. So which one should we pick? Which one should we pick? Vortex or UFO? What do I feel out here? Why well, I, I hear a lot of screaming for UFOs. I have a few things under my belt since I've been around on this planet Earth. But I can't combine them because it's just a little too long. So what we'll do is, let's start with vortex. Because vortexes are, they're all over the place. I thought it was just here in Arizona, like up in Sedona. Everybody knows about Sedona's vortexes. But no, no, they're... They're all over the planet, and, and the United States, we're covered with vortexes. So that's what we're going to do. The thumbnail. Vortex. Now there's vortexes that are all four of the elements, fire, air, water, earth. Vortexes. Something that spins. A velocity. They're anomalies. Hard to explain. But they exist. So that's why I want to... The one that I... Okay, mine was air. Mine was an air vortex. Now, I guess they got one in Texas that just recently came up. It was uh, not an air. It was it was um, a water. Water vortex. And it was in Texas. Lake Mexa... Mexoma. Mexoma. Lake Mexoma. It's in Texas. Recently, they just found a vortex in the water. And they, it was going on. They can't explain it. So, what I'm going to bring up is what happened to me that, that came up right in front of my face. A vortex. An air vortex. So, I got to cheat. I can't. I have a fantastic memory, but when it comes down to... The, as many states as that we have vortexes in? Oh my goodness, I'm sure all you kids, by the way, aloha kids, and whoever else is watching. We have to cheat. So, just in the United States alone. Not going too many places other than the United States. That's enough for us. We got vortexes in Alabama, Alaska, Arizona. Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida. Hey, Florida. That's where I was born. And Georgia, Hawaii, Aloha, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Kentucky, now, mind you, these are vortexes in these states. We're not done yet. So we got Kentucky, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Puerto Rico, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wyoming, and the Bermuda Triangle, which I have an episode on the Bermuda Triangle one with Dr. Uh, Ray Brown finding that ruby that nobody wants to talk about, but he did find the crystal. Uh, the Bermuda Triangle one, scroll down, very informative. He actually went into the Bermuda Triangle. <clears throat> so these are the um, the ones in the United States that we uh, we know about. So what Uncle Martin did was he went and played uh, a game. It's called disc golf 
all right? And anybody out there, I'm sure you all know what disc golf is. You throw these, these, these discs, some call them frisbees, but the disc golf players get very upset when you call a disc a frisbee. This is why. <laughs> okay, this is a putter. You can see the putter has sort of a roundness to it. And this, oh, by the way, this is coming full circle. I'm just showing you where I, where I witnessed the phenomenon, the air vortex that came up right in front of my face. So this is a Valkyrie. This is more of a distance. And you can see the distance on this is a little thinner than this fat one. So the fat one, the, the, the putter you can catch like a frisbee. This one, it'll break your fingers. They go great distances depending on who's throwing them. So we went to we went to a, a park. It's called Moyer Park. It's in Tempe, Arizona. But what's interesting about this place is I think I've always noticed because I've played there for so many years. It's a desert course. What it has is a, an anomaly in itself just with rain. Because I've been there on rainy, well, that's what I'm saying. Where, where, where this park is, on one, this is Tempe. On one side is Phoenix. The other side is Scottsdale. <laughs> and the other side is another another one I'll, I'll come up with. As soon as my subconscious tells me. So we got, it's, it's, it's quarantined around. When it rains, it doesn't rain in this place for some reason. It rains all around it. Yeah. So that's something to put on the back shelf. Vortexes. I know I'm beating a dead horse with you kids. Because in school, I know you kids have been told about, you know, vortexes. And, and how they, and well, they, I'm sure they didn't tell you about the ancients that knew about it. in Sumeria and uh, Egypt and India, I'm sure they didn't get that far with you. But we know if we want to come up a little closer to our timeline, there was a fellow named, I got to cheat again, Daniel Bernoulli. He, um, he did the principle on vortexes, and that was in 1738. Imagine that. So what it comes down to is, I got to cheat. I'm sorry I got to read this, but again, we want to get this perfectly clear. A vortex is generated because the air existing in the container at the center of the hole is traveling faster than the air exciting around the edge of the hole. That makes sense. So also, it's, it's, he had some other points to it. Uh, the gravitational pressure, the potential energy of the elevation, kinetic energy, and uh, fluid the fluidity of motion uh, remains constant. Now, I'm sure you all know that, all you kids with more experience, and all you parents, of course you would know all that. Well, I didn't know it. That's why I had to look it up. What exactly was I looking at? Okay, so we get around the course, the back nine of where we're on hole, hole number seven. I'm going to go out there to show you what a disc can do to the best of my ability. And I'll show you exactly when it comes to that one, it'll be, oh, I don't know, Frisbee's, uh, Vortex Frisbee. That'll be the one when I do it. I'll show you exactly where it happened for me. Now, mind you, this is not a calm day. It was, that's what I'm saying. I wrote this all down and I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it uh, because I Googled it and they're not giving me all the stuff that I had in the beginning. They always change things around, as you well know or don't. So it was whatever year it was that Deer Valley Airport had 150 mile an hour winds. That's the day. I wasn't up in Deer Valley. That was like 33, 35 miles away. I was down in Tempe on the disc course, Moyer Park. Now, it wasn't 150 mile an hour as we were playing in because that'd be ridiculous. I believe ours was only about 55, maybe 80 miles an hour. And you say, why would anyone be out in that kind of weather? Well, I did lose a few discs, but it was well worth it because the way the wind was coming in, you could, you could anticipate when you're doing a sidearm or reverse spin, uh, how, the, how, how the wind would take it. And it was going way past this basket, which was normally... It was a five hole. 
took five times to get there. And our discs were going past that. This is the kind of wind we were dealing with. So, <laughs> what I'm saying is, nobody in their right mind would be out there except we were, yeah, we were really disc, disc golf players, as I still am. There was a fella still up at the tee pad. Now, he was looking down at me. I was three quarters of the way down to the basket. And all of a sudden, well, the wind was always, always blowing. But what happened was about, I'm going to say 75, uh, maybe closer feet away. I'm going to say maybe 50 feet away. This uh, circle was started out like that big. By the way, it's, it's a blue sky. And this is kind of a blue vortex that was appearing in front of my face. It was about that big starting. And then it started going around really quick. And it was getting really kind of big. And it was getting up about the size of uh, me. And I just felt it was negative. So what I did, I said, be gone! And I yelled it out very loudly. And all of a sudden, that whirling mass, <laughs> just stop and and as, as it went away i'm looking at my buddies that are up on the disc and they're waving and say hey, well, they saw it too okay it was i wasn't the only one and we asked i i said hey did you guys see that and he said yeah it looked like a whirlwind popping up right in front of you see and that's what i'm saying could it have been a tornado i don't think so tornadoes don't they go this way on the bottom like this going up like that this wasn't going up like that this is coming like right at me so i'm saying is there anybody out there that has had this type of experience or have seen it from a distance or actually <laughs> fell into one. <laughs> I, I just need a comment if anybody has something like that um, because it's, it's been bugging me ever since forever now and that's why I'm bringing these things up. Now that, that was the Vortex one which we have them all over the United States as I've gone through. So thumbnail, Vortex. Anybody out there been around one, seen one? Hey, it could be fire, air, water, and earth. You don't care. Leave me a comment. Yeah, it's time to eat, I know. Okay, so till I see you again, when I do see you again, it'll be on UFOs. I promise. When I see you. I might do some shorts that you won't see me, but you'll hear me. Okay, till we see each other again, be well. God victory. Leave a comment on this one, please. Thumbs up or down. I don't care. I am concerned. Be well.